I've been, this has been no secret. Um, I used to watch you wrestle. I used to wrestle alongside you way back in the day. Um, didn't like women's wrestling. Then when you jumped into fighting, didn't like women's fighting. Uh, it was you and Ronda Rousey that kind of brought me along and said, you know, I got to start paying attention to women. Uh, you, you trained harder than me in wrestling as a result. Made the world team, and I didn't. Uh, you train harder than me, I suspect, now. Then when I was in my prime in fighting, you do that now in your fighting. You're 6-0. and oh. You have a totally different look, a totally different style than Ronda Rousey, but a lot of people, including myself, are comparing you to the next, to be the next person in line after Kat Zagano gets done with it. You'll be the next one in line to fight her. Have you noticed any added pressure in your training patterns because of this? No, um, I think that because of the way I am with wrestling, um, I've set my sights on being number one since I started MMA. So, uh, you know, people were watching my, my fights in, in the women's MMA world the second I started fighting. So there's no really added pressure. They're saying, you know, an Olympian starting this, and we're going to see what she's made of. You're 6-0. and oh. You had... Two submissions, one by punching and one by rear naked choke in the very beginning of your career, but your last four fights have all gone to the decision. Why? Is just the talent was better now, and that's why you're going to more decisions, or did something change in your technique and style that made you have submissions early and not now? I think it's the level change and, and the people that I'm fighting. And um, sometimes, you know, people are fighting to, to have, like, a good fight against you rather than them taking a lot of risk and, you know, trying to win the fight. And not saying all of them are like that. Some of it, it is just when you get two people who are close in skill, then, you know, it'll appear boring to somebody who doesn't, you know, know the technicalities of it. But some of it is that they just don't want to get thrown or they don't want to get embarrassed, you know? Let's, uh, let's talk about Kaz and Gano and Misha Tate fight. There's been a lot of controversy around Kim Winslow, the referee, uh, for that fight, a lot of people are saying she stopped it too early. A couple of fights earlier in the card, she stopped it too late. How do you feel about her, her roughing style in that particular fight? I think that, you know, like referees have a split second to make a decision between somebody's welfare and not. And so um, I'm a little bit more lenient on the refs. And I guess, like in wrestling, I was raised if you're on your back, you're at the ref's mercy. Mm -hmm. If they call you pinned, oh, well, you shouldn't have been on your back. And I feel like if you are in a dangerous position where you can't protect yourself or you look like that to the refs, then, you know, you're you're giving them the option. Whereas if you're dominating the fight and you're staying in good position, then you're not going to get the fight stopped, you know? So, mm -hmm. I mean, you, obviously we can't control everything, but... Do you think, Misha, say, do you think Misha could have kept on fighting against Kat or do you think that she was pretty much done at that point? I... I don't know. I personally think that, you know, when she dropped, I didn't, I also thought she dropped because she couldn't, I didn't look like a takedown attempt that I saw. Right. So when I saw her fall, I was like, oh man, you know, like I thought she was hurt. So mm -hmm. I, I probably would have made the same call as Kim. And it's only after I, I looked at her face and saw her a little clearer face, but she was eating a lot of unanswered shots, you know? Yeah. Without, and really when she started shooting, she went from, being tight and having her shoulders shrugged and keeping her head up to all of a sudden really reaching with her hands. And that's a real bad sign of someone when they go from being real technical to not, that they're starting to get, one, exhausted, but two, the brain's starting to shut down a little bit. I think it was a good stoppage. I think it was the right on time. I think Kim, actually, I don't like Kim Winslow as a referee. I think she's actually the worst referee we have. But I think in that one fight, she actually did a very, very good job. Um, I don't like her because I think she gets too involved. The referee's there for fighter safety, not to be part of the show. And she tries to be part of the show too much, but that's just my personal opinion. That fight yeah. did a great job. Well, and um, when you look at Misha's level change, mm -hmm. it was a little too fast. You know, like that's yeah. not, it looked like your legs are going out from under you rather than, you know, it's only the people who can see after the fact that we can say whether it was a one second too short, one second too long. But, you know, their job is to protect her and, you know. If, she, if Misha Tate would have gotten brain damage, I'm sure she would have wished that it was stopped earlier. Absolutely. You know, I would, too. I'd say, damn, it sucks that I lost, but, you know, the alternative is too long. Exactly. Okay, let's move on to your first fight in the UFC. You're getting ready to fight Sheila Gaff. Um, what do you know about your opponent, and, and how do you see her when you watch tapes of her? Um, I just, you know, I've watched um, a little bit of her stuff, you know, just enough to get the general sense of 
how she likes to fight, her pace, you know, where she gravitates towards, how she is a little bit on the ground, like her go-to stuff, basically. And, um, you know, like the, the biggest thing that stands out is her, you know, intensity level and the pace that she likes to keep, you know, it's very high, you know, and very overwhelming pace. Now, her pace to me seems like she tries to keep a very, very high pace with a lot of people where she's pushing like an old, like a wrestler will. You're at 80%, but then when you need to accelerate to your 90%, your acceleration is so fast and can go for so long that people can't maintain and keep up with you. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you see this fight being one of those where you have to prove that, look, I'm in way better shape and I'm way stronger, that you're going to have to like really settle her down in the first round and show her who's boss to kind of get her to, to quit moving? Or is it going to be a long pick and move kind of pace? Um, I think it would probably be closer to the first one. Uh, I think that, I mean, that's what I've trained to just say that sometimes when people set that pace, you know, like if you, if you can't match that pace, you get, you also get overwhelmed with that. Like, and I just noticed that like when I go with people in wrestling, you know, if I wasn't someone who was just answering right back and getting right into the mix of things that I did, I, I ended up being the one that was, you know, a second behind where the fight was going or the match was going and stuff like that. So I train to, to match it or, you know, be the one who dictates the pace rather than, you know, just to stay back and be more defensive, you know? Absolutely. And that, and that makes the most amount of sense that, you know, for me, when I started getting older and started slowing down a little bit and these kids were getting younger and faster, that I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be a second behind. So let me grab them. I'm just going to grab them. I'm going to tie them up. And I'm going to let them know how strong I am. And I'm going to wear them down by leaning on them. Now they can't move as fast. And now I'm back in the game. But if I let it be a separation game, I get killed because I can't catch them. And I end up always yeah. being behind. So. Yep, or letting them choose the pace. You know, yeah. you have to say, we're going my pace, and that's just the way it is. Give us some, Just give us a normal training day for you, uh, beginning of training camp. Not now, because I know things are tapering down, and you're starting to change a little bit more. But, like, beginning of training camp, what's a normal day for you? I normally train twice a day. Um, I have technique in the morning, and... Uh, live stuff in the afternoon and so usually I do that year-round just because I'm a wrestler and I just train year-round <laughs> but um when it's beginning like the beginning of my camp uh it's earlier at the beginning of my camp like about a month out it'll be longer goes you know to to build my conditioning base you know and then as I get closer and closer it's short and highly explosive goes like it'll even taper down to like one minute goes where people are working in on me or one minute goes where it's my absolute maximum pace, you know, like and I get a short break and then I go one minute, like a pace that I couldn't actually maintain for, you know, 15 minutes. So just to, um, you know, to build my shorter range explosiveness and stuff like that too. It's really similar to like the tapering you would do for wrestling. Yeah. Nothing's changed except the cardio system. Instead of going hard for, you know, depending, you know, what area you were in five, six or seven minutes, it's set up now that you're going to be able to do that for 15 minutes. So you have to double your cardio system. What was the, yeah. what was the toughest part for you to learn? I mean, obviously, you're such a great wrestler. Was it the boxing portion, the jiu-jitsu portion, or the ability to slow down a little bit and be able to maintain for 15 minutes? Um, actually, I'm pretty surprised, but the longer that it goes, the better it is for me. Like, I don't know why. Like, as I get older... And, I mean, it's definitely better that I don't have six competitions in one day, you know. Right. Having one competition, that's that's great. You know, I can definitely do that. But um, when I, I notice, like, whenever I don't train, my striking comes back pretty sharp. You know, it only takes a couple workouts to, to rust, you know, get the rust off and stuff. But my jujitsu, I start making, uh, you know, like, the mistakes that I make. I start getting back into wrestler habits so it didn't make sense to me at all. I talked to my boyfriend about it, and he's uh -huh. like, oh, you know, it makes sense because with the striking, you're building new muscle memory, whereas mm -hmm. sometimes with the jiu-jitsu, you're rewriting old muscle memory, and, you know, like, if I have a little time off, and then my, my 16 years in wrestling starts to, you know, come back. Stronger, yeah. yeah. That, make, that yeah. makes sense. Um, last question before I get you out of here. How tough is it for you to have a girly girl as a daughter? <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, uh, "Am I your real mom?" <laughs> like, I, I must happened? admit, I stalk you on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Like, I follow everything, and every time you put a picture of your daughter, I laugh so hard and watch her in her little dresses, and she's walking around. I'm like, Sarah, you got your hands full with her. Oh, 
and you know, like, she's every bit as sassy and stubborn. Like, she will, like, stand up to me. And this is when she was, like, two years old. She'll, like, she'll refuse to do something. And I can be like, you're going to go take a nap, you know. Or I can be like, you know, I'll try and entice her. I'll be like, if you can, if you do this, I'll, I'll give you some candy. And she just refuses. And I'm like, dang, I got to respect that. Like, she just stood right up to me. <laughs> that's a, that's a going to be a good girl. What do you think she's going to end up doing? Do you think that she's going to end up being... Um, she's gonna be athletic just because her mom is. She has no choice. But will it be more of a wrestling physical sport, or do you think it should be more of like um, tennis, gymnastics, golf kind of kind of space? I don't know. Like I'll probably get her more involved with uh, jujitsu because she's really tiny, you yeah. know. And I figure jujitsu is a little better sport for that if you're a smaller opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, so. She already knows some arm bars and she knows takedowns and stuff like that. So I think I'd really enjoy her doing jiu-jitsu. But yeah. wrestling, she's going to be the tiniest in the room, and sometimes that's pretty rough. It's, it makes it for a long, long practice when you're the smallest guy in the room, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's really tough. I don't care if you're male or female. You get in that room, and, and everyone's you know five or ten pounds heavier. At the at the smallest level, You're yeah. I mean, that's a lot of weight. I mean, you're really having a problem. So It's much better if you can attack their neck or their arm. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Their heels and their knees and get them out of the way. Yeah, it's perfect. It's, Sarah, thanks for coming on here, MMA Oddsbreaker. I really appreciate you coming on here. And I personally want to say thanks for, for you being one of the, the, the really cornerstone females that changed my mind about female fighting. Like, I really was against it, didn't like it, never paid attention to it, and really started because of, honestly, and this, this, is, this is not me just trying to hype you up, because you and Rhonda were fighting, I started paying attention. This, you are the reason why I started paying attention when it's fighting, even though it's been around since, you know, for as long as I've been fighting, you know, 